So for the last one, we're going to do a little person with earphones on. And it's going to be a symbol. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the body first. So I'm going to use an ellipse and I'm going to go with green for this one so we get a totally different color. And I'm going to make a little elliptical shape like that. Hold down primary touch to get a perfect circle. Let's zoom in a bit to make it easy to see. And then what I want to do is I want to cut a bit over here where his head is going to be. So I'm going to use another ellipse and once again a perfect circle there. A bit smaller than the first one. Maybe I may need to make that a bit bigger. And once again if you're not sure about what you're doing here just go over to outlines and that way you can see perfectly where it is. So back to preview I'm going to select both of those and I'm going to use my pathfinder of course minus the front and convert. I want to cut the bottom off of this so it's kind of rounded at the moment. I'm going to use a rectangle, put the rectangle up not quite to the middle maybe just a little bit below so we get that roundedness on the outside. Select both of those same again pathfinder and we'll go down to the minus front convert to path. Okay, let's have a look now at doing the head and the earphones. Now I'm going to do something slightly different this time. I'm going to make the head first of all. So I'll use an ellipse. Um, <clears throat> draw my elliptical shape in. And then I'm going to draw in my earphones also as ellipses. So go to my elliptical tool, hold down the primary touch and draw in the shape that I want. Now that's going to go on this side here and I'm going to make a copy of that by holding down the secondary touch on this side. Oh look at that, we've got Princess Leia. Who knew? Anyway, um, I'm going to select all of those areas and then I'm going to go up to my Pathfinder but this time I'm not going to use what you expect. I'm going to go down and I'm going to use something called divide all. Now when I use divide, try again, when I use divide all, it divides all of those into individual parts, but they're grouped together. If you try and move them, it sees them as one shape. So the next thing I have to do is to ungroup them. And there's a little ungrouping icon in this display over here. It's this one here. So if I just click on ungroup to get them all ungrouped, now you'll see that when I move this one out, I can just pull it out a little bit like that. I could pull this one out a little bit like that. Now this is still actually made up of three shapes. So I'm just going to go back to the Pathfinder and combine them all and convert it to a path again. Let's move those into the right position down here. And then I want to put the band across the top of the earphone so it does look more like an earphone rather than somebody with just very um, <clears throat> large type of ears. So I'm going to do once again something we did with the rocket. I'm going to make an elliptical shape like that. I'm going to hold down the secondary touch and make a copy which is down here. So once again you can see that's what I've done there. Just move them around. And I'm going to select them both and Pathfinder. I'm going to then go in and I'm going to minus the front object and convert to a path. And that's the little bit that's going to go on the earphones itself to make it look more like it is actually an earphone. And I think that's looking pretty good. Um, I might make this a little bit smaller and just pull it in a little bit like, like that. Now, so that when I start to move these around, I don't mess the whole thing up. I'm going to select all of them and I'm going to go to group. So it's the little group icon down here. That's the third one in from the right. I'm just going to click it to group them all together. So now when I click on, let's try that again, group them all together. So when I click on one, they're all grouped and I can scale them all 
very quickly as well, like so. Anyway, have a bit of a go and don't forget to try out that um, little option which is the, the divide in here. It's near the bottom and it can be quite useful using divide all to just divide up your object in that way you can just pull the bits apart as you need them. Give it a go. So before we start to go any further, I'm going to make copies of all of these icons and move them down to the bottom so we've got something else we can work on when we're doing the logos. If I select all of them, I'm going to hold down my secondary touch and just move them all down like that. Now what I want to do is I want to give them a sort of an app type of feel to them. So I'm going to put a little box around the outside with the rounded corners. So I'm going to go to my rectangular tool and I'm going to draw the box in. Let's move in here a bit and draw in that box shape, holding down the primary touch so I get a perfect square. Then I can go to the corner and I can pull the corner in to round off the corners to taste. Now all I've got to do is send that to the back. So to move that to the back, I'm going to be using this little option here which allows me to drag or change the stacking order. And as you can see, I can just stack it that way. It might take a while because there's a lot of objects there, but it will eventually move it down, down, down in the order of the objects until it goes right to the back. So this one is going to be the same um, pink as that one. In fact, it's going to be red, I think. And then I'm going to take the shape itself and make that white. So we could subtract one from the other, but we're just going to keep it as a white shape. And then I'm going to work my way through the rest of these doing exactly the same thing. But because I've already got the, the rectangle, I can just click on it, hold down the secondary touch, drag to make a copy in there. The car might have to be made smaller. Let's do another one over here and another one for the last one over there. And then I can just work my way through. This is going to be purple. And the car with its wheels. Now you can see I'm just multiple selecting by holding down the primary touch in there is going to be white. My whale, and this is where it's sometimes it's useful to kind of um, group things together. So let's have a look at how else we could select that whale. I could click and drag to select everything, including the square at the back, and then I could hold down my primary touch and click on the back square to deselect it. So the whale is all selected now. I can make that white. While I'm there, I'm also actually going to group it together. It'll just make it easier in the long run. And then I can give that a color. So we'll go back and choose the blue that I was using. I think it was over, over there. Not the same, but that's fine for the moment. And let's move finally on to our little person with the earphones. So I can click on that because it's grouped together. Choose white for that one. Go to my background and I'll find the, um, the green. Now, if I want the same green as I used earlier on down the bottom, well, I could use my little eyedropper and just move the eyedropper over to select that green from there. Right, these will need to be moved around a little bit like that, getting them right in the middle. Some, whoops, I thought I'd group that one together. Um, some of them you'll find that you might need to actually rescale and jiggle around, but have a go and get some icons going. So I've got my little shapes here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the icon and the shape around it and I'm just going to group it together. I'm going to work through all four of these very quickly, selecting, grouping, selecting, grouping. And then I want to even these all out and line them all up. Now the first thing is, you see if I'm moving these around, the little smart guides kick in and when the distances are the same, it shows me with little guides in there. And the other thing that I want to do is I want to make sure they're all aligned vertically. Now we've got an alignment and distribution option in here and I can just go along here and I can just align with the tops or with the middles or with the bottoms. I can also distribute items evenly as well so they're all perfectly distributed at the same time. Have a go, neaten them up and then we'll get on to the next section of making the logos. 
So let's do the last row of icons. I'm going to put some text in some of them and some of them I'm going to do as strokes. So let's start off with the stroked ones first. I'm going to move into the car. I'm going to select it and then I'm just going to flick the fill to the stroke and I do that with that little double arrow over there. Now remember if you want to change the width you can do that down here by clicking on then I can then just drag to change the width of that stroke. I'm keen to keep it quite narrow and quite delicate. Now something similar with the fish or the whale. I'm going to select it and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to make it into strokes. Now this is a bit of a problem because the fin on the side looks a bit weird. I've just noticed that this one up here as well isn't quite in the right position. I'd have to fix the other one at the top too. So what I'm going to do is first of all I'm going to ungroup it because this shape is grouped together so I'm going to click on ungroup to ungroup it and this will then allow me to fix this and I can just drag it into the right position over there. Then I can take these two shapes here and just use my pathfinder to unite them together into one. So I'll just use combine all, convert to path like so. It's a little bit liney and a bit all over the shot. I need something to keep it together. So I'm going to do another circle in there. So I'm going to take a little ellipse like this. I'm going to hold down my primary touch and I'm going to draw an elliptical shape. Let's move that into the right position over there. And I'm going to make it slightly thicker as well, just to get some sort of difference between it and the icon. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to actually get the fins to overlap that circle. So that the circle looks like it's at the back. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my layers and I'm going to move that ellipse right the way to the back in there. So let me select it and just drag it down to the very bottom. Now, of course, because these are empty objects, you're not going to see that that's actually behind it. So I'm now going to select the body of the fish and fill it with white. I'm going to select this um, tail fin here and fill that with white as well. So those are looking okay. Let's do some text in here. So I'm going to start off over here with the rocket. Now with the rocket I just want the word go underneath there so I'm going to click on the type tool, one little click in here and type in the word go. Now to type I need to select the text. I double click it, it opens up my keyboard and I can then type in anything I need. So there we've, we've got it. I've got all my text in now and I've got some outlines going on. Now <clears throat> have a bit of a go, not just with these shapes, but try some other shapes as well. Have a look at existing logos and seeing what other people are, are doing. You'll find that so many logos are purely just squares and circles when you start to break them down. But look around you as well and see what you can create and just simplify it into circles and squares. Have so much fun with it. It's such a cool tool.